All right, we are going to look at constant acceleration in the rotational direction. So we will have to, from time to time, link up a linear direction with a rotational direction. Okay? How we get between those is we're going to use the relationship that the angle in radians is equal to the arc length divided by the radius. So I could solve for that arc length or that distance traveled on the outside edge. And then I can use that same relationship of theta times r equals x to say, well, the angular speed times the radius is equal to the linear speed. How fast is that object traveling around that outside edge? And then here, I can talk about the angular acceleration times the radius is equal to the tangential acceleration. Now in this chapter, we're going to have two types of linear acceleration. We're going to have tangential acceleration. That's the one that goes into our linear equations. Okay? This tells us how fast something is speeding up or slowing down. It's telling me about a change in the magnitude of the velocity. We will also have AC, the centripetal acceleration or the radial acceleration, which points radially inward and tells me about the change in direction. How fast am I changing the direction from pointing this way to now pointing that? And so how that looks on my circle is AC points radially inward, A tan points along with the velocity tangential to my circle. Omega and alpha, um, they are going to be using the clockwise counterclockwise for us. So counterclockwise is going to be a positive value, whereas clockwise is going to be a negative value. Okay. All right, so. Once you list your variables, because you have a constant acceleration, you'll fill in your information, and then you just pick an equation. Sometimes we may have to convert some units, or we might have to change a linear quantity to a rotational quantity using one of our conversions. Then we just need to pick an equation. Now, the equations are exactly the same for rotational as they are for linear. They just have different variables. So instead of speed squared, it's going to be angular speed squared. And Initial angular speed squared plus 2 alpha times theta minus theta naught. So I'm just substituting in the angular quantities into that equation. All right, let's try an example. So now we're going to look at this centrifuge I have here. This centrifuge has small vials in it. The radius for those vials is 13 centimeters from the center to the end of that vial out. This thing will speed up to 3,200 RPMs in about 100 seconds. So I want to know, what is its radial acceleration? How fast is it moving or angularly accelerating from 0 to 3,200 RPMs if it does it in 100 seconds? We're also going to figure out how fast or what is the linear speed of a point right out here at the end as it spins around. How many G's is this centrifuge actually producing at that end point as well? All right, so it's going to consider a constant angular acceleration, so that means I'm going to list my variables. So I have theta naught, theta, omega naught, omega, alpha, and T. It starts at rest and zero radians per second, and it speeds up to 3,200 revolutions per minute. RPMs, and it takes 100 seconds to do that. And I want to find alpha. Now, you might say revolutions per minute, that's not going to do, go well with seconds or radians. So what do we have to do? We have to convert that. So I have to get rid of revolutions, and I have to go to radians. And there's two pi radians in one revolution. I have to get rid of minutes and go to seconds, and there's 60 seconds in a minute. So when I make this conversion, I'll be able to use that value for omega to solve for alpha. So what equation should I pick? Well, pick one without theta. So that is going to be our omega equals omega initial plus alpha t. Crossing out that zero, solve for our unknown alpha. So I have omega divided by time equals alpha. I'll figure out what omega is, divide it by 100, and I get an alpha value of... 3.35 radians per second squared is what its angular acceleration will be on its way up to speed. Now, once it gets to this omega, 
how fast is that point at the outside edge moving? So what is the linear speed of a point on the outside edge? Okay, well to find linear speed, I'm gonna have to do omega times r. So I'm gonna have to take this omega to find linear speed, and I'm gonna have to multiply it by the radius. And what did we say the radius was? 13 centimeters. So my radius, which was 13 centimeters, I am gonna have to convert that from centimeters to meters. One goes with the prefix 10 to the negative two, because top and bottom have to mean the same thing. So I get 0.13 meters. Plug that in, I find out the linear speed comes out to about 26.8 meters per second. For those of us in America, that is about 60 miles per hour that a point on that outside edge is going. So if I was to tape a small chunk of wood on the outside edge, get this up to speed and that tape gave out, it would release that chunk of wood at 60 miles an hour. So I have the end point out here going 60 miles an hour. What is the centripetal acceleration on it? How many g's is it pulling? Well, in order to find centripetal acceleration, I'm to square my velocity, divide it by the radius, and when I do that, I find out that my centripetal acceleration in g's, so I have to divide by 9.8 to figure out the number of g's, comes out to 917 g's. So just over 900 g's is what this centrifuge does. Okay.